Hi YouTube, we're here with the ASH 26 here and I didn't have a chance because we ran out of memory to show you this but the rudder obviously is working as it had been before these are so bright it's hard to even show the detail but there's there's two bumps one bump for the left side and one bump for the right and look how far the field of vision is for the white light you can almost be going forward and still see it there's going to be more obstructions though because of this top mounted wing and I just really wanted that light to straddle this rudder so that no matter what angle you're looking at with the exception of where it's completely blocked here and then you should pick up the red and the the green LEDs on the wingtips but I just want to show you guys how that turned out it turned out really good um, it was a ton of work and here I'll give you guys with the power with the power off of course you can you can see the contours and the shape of the the CA and it definitely looks kind of weird but it's completely encapsulated in CA so we don't have to worry about it getting any moisture in there but from a distance of course you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to tell and furthermore it's gonna be lit up when you're really looking at it so it should be no problem but anyway that pretty much takes care of the uh, the fuselage everything else is being done on the wings um, in terms of lights and so we have those marked and obviously removed and we'll get those going next so Welcome to part four, ASH 26 LED nav lighting project. Okay, so we got the wings set out here. I marked them before I took them apart, so I would remember which one needs to receive which light. These are built up balsa wood wings. I had originally thought about trying to put a white forward facing light, but I think for now, I'm not really gaining anything by adding that because I intend to pull power from this servo if I do the light there or in this area on the front leading edger but for this for this light down here I intend to tap power from this servo there's nothing real super terribly specific about where I'm gonna get power from I'm gonna do it exactly the same way I did on the fuse and um, Basically what I need to do is just get a red or a green one going and they're going to be mounted to the leading edge as far outboard as I can make them and still guarantee that I'll have a path, a channel to get the wire back to there. So in order to get that figured out, worst case scenario, I'll have to break off the winglet, the sharklet. If I have to do that, it's not that big a deal, um, but it might be a little challenging to get it on and off of there without any further damage to the monocoat. So if I break these off then I for sure can get my hole drilled to bring the channel back to there. Um, obviously this is a pretty enough plane I'm not gonna I'm not just gonna tape it to the surface. But one thing I haven't done in the past is that a lot of times if you need to get a wire back you can actually cheat them into this channel back here thus not interrupting the airflow but again, I don't like to do that unless it's an absolute necessity. The other thing is we can go on the trailing edge. But one thing I've learned about some of these planes is they have that blunt edge on it. And that blunt edge is supposed to help with the aerodynamic capability of the wing. I don't know if I buy it or not, but I've heard it. So the other thing is, now that we know that we have plenty of throw on the flaps mechanism, we could conceivably trim that and trim this and then we would end up with a little bit less protrusion but again we don't have to do that right now so it'd be kind of nice to have it if we need it later so our next step is going to be to determine how long of a lead we want and if we're going to do 
you know, like feather light wire, if we're going to go with something that's um, a little bit stronger and more capable of carrying some power current through it, like what we did on the, the tail light, this is what we'd be using. It's so in, inconsequential in terms of weight on this vehicle that I sort of hate to go with this type of thing, which is a motor winding wire. Uh, we can certainly do that. But this stuff, I mean, it's like virtually no weight at all. I use those on my Ultra Micros, but they're a lot more work to work with. Since it's a solid core, it's a lot more challenging to do it. The big catch is getting them through the hole that's going to be the new channel um, is going to be a lot easier. So now our next step is going to be, of course, to open up the wing. And one advantage that's really big on this system is that we actually have the capability of, I guess I don't really need that plugged in just quite yet, we have the capability of opening up the wing at the servo pockets. And so we have that advantage that we normally don't have. So just slide this junk forward. Got two different Phillips screwdrivers because it seems like these screws are kind of the in-between don't really like to work properly size. So I need to probably get a magnet so I don't mix up my screws. I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I've got a different screwdriver as well. This one seems to work a little better. It's just a regular Craftsman screwdriver. It's a Maybe it's a 1.5 tip. Oh, it's a P1, P1 tip. Number two would be kind of like your standard Phillips screwdriver, for like a handheld tool, not a precision screwdriver at all, of course. I don't know if you guys could hear, but it sounded almost like a crush when I started pushing into that screw. It's a super comforting sound. Okay, there's a little bit of an adhesive quality going on there. Probably from when I put uh, CA into the screw holes. Not a big deal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually twist this to remove it. There we go. Okay, so now we know... Okay, so remember this is plugged into an extension cord, so ideally if you could plug into the extension cord, that might be kind of nice, but you can see what's going on as I'm running into stuff. And thinking back to when I first initially installed stuff, I had a real heck of a time with that. So, that's not very fun. So what I was going to say is, now that I've got this opened, Ideally, I can sight down and see if we have an opening, which we don't, all the way down. So that means we're going to have to make our own channel to get our wire out to the exit point, the outboard exit point here. Which, to be honest with you, I pretty much accept, expected that anyway. So now what we have to do is we have to figure out what tool we're going to use to make that channel. And I have to assume it's going to be this drill bit set, but I, I could be wrong. I could be, um, could be looking at the wrong size bit. But for now, let's let's get these out. Boy, this bit does not want to come out, does it? Okay, so that bit, incidentally, is uh, one eighth of an inch. And this is usually my, my goal, is to ensure that I can reach all the way. Now, the first rib that we're going to hit is right here, okay? And we are just shy. Plus, you're going to have the chuck biting onto this bit at some point. The other thing you got to think about is, like, how thick is this wing? How much of the material are we going to be removing doing this? Looks like, at minimum, 
we're going to remove one eighth of an inch, you know, right at the end here. I would love it to be up at the top of the the winglet, the sharklet, but I learned my lesson trying to do that on the Airbus A330. So the other thought I have is that sometimes getting wires into a plane like this, they don't always have to be done with a drill. You can actually use a hot blade and then just chase the, the hot blade through. But I think that's going to be quite tricky because if we have this, and let's say we drill it through this way, just straight, right? Eventually we'll get out here into one of these cavities between the ribs. I mean, there's going to be ribs every so often. But you're not going to be able to see. And so I'm going to have to push in wire blindly and pull it back through. It's going to be a nightmare. So the other option is, of course, to take this off and then drill straight through thus guaranteeing a channel, but then we're not necessarily guaranteeing that we'll be able to see. There may be an end plate here, and I can't remember. In fact, I do remember because you had to glue these two knobs stuck in, so you're not going to be able to see the end, even if we did take this shark lid off. So I think we're stuck basically getting creative. We're going to have to drill a hole all the way down, and then we're going to have to drill a hole, and then we're going to have to somehow chase a rope or the wire itself through. Or, or, we just take the ultra light stuff and we more or less put it onto this surface, <clears throat> which I really don't like the idea of at all. And there's one other option, and that is to cut with an X-Acto knife a channel and then cut a channel to get the wire out. And then we would basically stuff it in there and then glue it back shut. That's going to look really bad because this is obviously not a foam plane, so I don't think we should use that method. Now there is a channel here that goes most of the way out, but it doesn't go all the way out. And that would be accessible by taking this servo out as well, which we can do if we needed to. So then that would give us a path to bring the wire back potentially there. But I'm sure that it stops part way down. The other thing is we have our snake. I mean, you can use that snake thing to get through here but it's going to take a heck of a lot bigger hole than this. I think we need to investigate that ultralight wire. We need to just look at this. Because the more I think about this project, the more I think I do not want to deteriorate the performance of this wing at all. Any more than I've already done for all the rest of the time when I added those flaps. This stuff is so dinky, it's almost indistinguishable. I mean, I got tons of it, so I wouldn't have any problems getting this project done, obviously. Okay, I'm just going to put this into the little lock that I've designed in here so it doesn't come unspooled. And, okay, so if I were to run that straight over... Just on the outside, with no special accommodation. I'm just wondering if that would be just as good as, you know, like running down the length like this if I did it that way. Because on foam, of course, you have the added benefit of being able to kind of compress it into the foam material. But this media is just so much different. Now, if we're just going from here to there, I can definitely make that path. It'll be a challenge because I'll have to do it without damaging anything else. But I could definitely get over here, and then I could run down that crack. <clears throat> but there may come a time when that causes a problem. 
particularly if you close the aileron all the way up onto the wire and then you were to cause wear and tear damage there. We could slice the, t the trailing edge and then stuff it in. But I just don't like the idea of having to depend on that being a clean job. I think it's going to be very difficult to do that as clean as I want it to be. <clears throat> well, the other thing is if you did it almost like a decorative line, you could run this out here like this and just make it almost look like a pinstripe. Um, but I, I don't know how many people that's going to fool. So I've got a little bit to think about on this. I was thinking that this would be even easier than the tail, but why would I think that, you know? So now i got to figure out what the heck I'm going to do on this thing. All right, guys, so while we think about the choices we've got to make, um, I am going to show you what I do to release these LEDs for consumption in these projects. I'm going to be using two, two of the red and two of the green. Um, so I need to free up one from each of these strips. This is a new one that I just clipped. It's got three, and this is an older one that I've already used for other projects. So the first thing you want to do is obviously get your soldering iron warm. And uh, let's see if I can get you guys a little better shot. Okay, so the way I usually do this is pretty easy. I'll take... First thing I do is I mark with the black marker the negative side because I don't have to identify it. And these ones I can get off of the, the strips fairly easy, unlike the ones, the GE ones from the billboard. Those ones I can't really do very easy. I, I've tried, I've gotten one or two of them off, but they're just it's so much work. Okay, so I'll usually try to kind of fold this in half, and then that will release the, the LED. See how it's kind of lifted a little bit? That's very hot, because that contact goes straight there. I just was soldering on it. And you guys remember when I was doing the tail lights, how I had problems with the uh, lights in series? Well, you got to remember they they're designed to run on 12 volts, and this uses a 331 ohm resistor for each of the three. in series and so obviously if you try to do that in series at 5 volts it's a big difference in power okay so we got one of them off of there and then just like we did before we need to test these but the problem is I haven't decided on the wire yet I'm leaning heavily toward just um, here I'll show you what I'm going to do with these I'm leaning heavily toward putting two of these in parallel, like we did before on the tail, and then one is going to point downward, and then one of them is going to point upward, right out here, and then the leads will continue, and then just shoot straight across. And I haven't decided if I'm just going to cut the slit. I know I kind of poo-pooed that plan a little bit, but... Honestly, I'm thinking about the amount of damage I could do putting a drill bit through here. It's not a very thick wing, guys. Look at this. I mean, I could maybe do it, but <clears throat> the problem is if I have to keep it at an angle in this pocket, I'd have to be like a mile back to make an angle so that I can get out to here, and plus then my hole's here. So, Anyway, like I said, while I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to get these things released. Uh, from the the strips. Now I always hang on to these in case I need these little surface mount uh, resistors, even though I don't usually run these at 12 volts. It's not impossible that I would have a circuit that could take advantage of that. 
So when you have a new one, see how they're not marked on the negative side? You don't have to mark them, but it's kind of nice to not have to wonder about it. And there is this little recess there, this little triangle shape on the corner. That marks the negative side on most of these LEDs, <laughs> but I don't know if there's not like a standard conformance, but they don't always do that. And so you may be frustrated if you try to hold that. It seems weird that they wouldn't, but I've ran into a few that won't work. So I'm holding the knife with my thumb, I'm just pushing down, putting heat and then pushing down on this little film. Didn't quite get that one totally separated, but I got it far enough. I think I can just kind of push this down a little bit more with the soldering iron. Ah, there you go. See how it's just folded open there? That's all we're doing. It's a lot easier than trying to do it with those uh, GE ones. That's like a half an hour thing, just trying to get one, and you end up destroying them, because they're so thin. Okay, so now I've got two removed for the red. And I found it's always easier to, rather than try to mark your LEDs, because they're always more or less going to be on a white case like this, I found that it's easier to just know which wing you're working on. I've also found that it's easier to not drop them because they will break if you're not careful. So there we, there we have it guys. So now I've got the negative side toward me and the negative side toward me. That looks like a flux burn. Okay, yeah. So both of the little triangles are side by side with the understanding I need just a small 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 gap between these two so I can make my pivot okay so now I need to know what wire I'm using guys and that means I gotta kinda know what what path I'm taking here which is very scary. Too many scary steps on this project. The other thing is I could drill at an angle here to enter into that cavity. I could go at a real steep angle and then chase it inside this aileron channel or I could cut and then just run down this aileron channel which would give me the ability to hide this and I could use a smaller drill bit to go across here and I'm only bridging a short distance it would definitely be the most hidden with the least negative ramifications because see here's the ramification we're going to run into eventually this servo is going to try to draw this aileron up all the way okay and yet we're going to be hitting that little wire I just don't like that. Alright guys, I've made a decision. I am going to, believe it or not, tape the really, really thin stuff down. Either in a straight line, straight across, or down and then over. And the rationale behind that is because A, it's removable. I can literally take it off, except for the actual glued on spot. But even that's probably removable if I pick it off at the right angle. And B, it's the lowest risk to the structure of the plane, which I don't want to give up over LEDs. I know that's kind of a tough one, but kind of what happened with the tail too. Okay, so this is the super small stuff. That's why I'm not so bent out of shape about it, because look how hard it is to see in the video. Um, you'll see it in person. But I mean, you'll really be looking for it. 
And then I get to thinking about some of my beautiful UMX planes. I have this wire going out, out the wing, and I don't even care. It's not a big deal. Now, this wing is a whole lot more pretty. But this is going to be, I don't even think it's going to be an aerodynamic effect. It'll be so minimal if it is. Okay, so the first things first, you just measure out approximately what you need. And I always like to pull this stuff tight, because that helps it to kind of stay straight. Because this stuff will whip everywhere, and it gets to being tricky, tricky to deal with. Then you can see here I've got this tape down, double-sided tape style. And uh, meaning I rolled it up on itself, and then I just taped the sides. Okay, that just helps hold everything down. Um, at this point, the negative side is on the back there for whatever reason. Not that there's a particular reason to, to do it that way or not. But what I'm doing now is I'm just getting ready to tape this down so that it stays put. And you want to keep the ends, you know, about the same length. They don't need to be identical length. Um, but since you're going to be cutting this here in a minute. Oh, I put my tape too far out. Dang it. Sorry, guys. There we go. Let's hope it stays now. So I've got that tape down. And this stuff is, believe it or not, surprisingly strong. So now I need to go ahead and cut it in the middle while supporting a few inches back. We're going to pull them straight out. And then this is how you strip off the coating. It's very simple. Heat it up. You can smell it burn off. And then you have your tinned area. So in this case, I'm going to let the other one down that I'm not using right now. And that is soldered. Of course, it wants to pop off my tape because it gets hot. And then it doesn't want to hold. So we'll just go ahead and push that back down. It's hot. And then the second side, again, we really don't even care about polarity yet. We do, we will in a minute. Just burn off the tip there. Which just sounds horrible to say that out loud. Okay, get some solder on the tip. Give that little bend. Okay, and I'm pretty sure we've got it now, but I gotta double check that. It's hot still. Now the crazy thing about this is that that bond actually ends up being pretty decent. This stuff is so thin you can cut it with scissors if you want. Okay, so it's quite simple to do that step. Now this is gonna be our negative lead, okay? So I'm gonna grab the negative lead and I'm just gonna tug it. Once it's through, I can stick this back down, and then I'm going to go ahead and mark this with preferably a rather large marker so it's easy. And you want it to be a dark enough mark that you can really see it. Okay, so then we're going to tin the other end. Which also serves to burn off the varnish. Okay, so now this is um, two LEDs in series. The red ones are the worst to deal with. They're the hardest to get right. They require the higher level of resistance. Um, otherwise, they get hot. And so this is a 100 ohm resistor going across ground there, going into ground. We're going to push that into the same spot. Then we're going to take the other side and we'll do the same thing. And we'll give you a view of this real quick. We're going to pause it so we don't miss the end of the video here. 
Okay guys, so real quick before the video ends, you can see we got red light. And there it is, and we got a little flicker going on. That's partly because these things don't make good contact always. Because they're just weak connection points. And that's with 100 ohms, so we're going to fiddle with it and try to get it equally as bright as the green. And that's what we'll be doing on part uh, 5 when we come back on the ASH26 LED nav light project. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.